This week's Farm Basics is brought to you by SatShot.com. Satellites aren't just for NASA anymore. Use the power of satellite imagery to create variable rate management zones in your fields. To reduce input costs and increase yields on your farm, go to SatShot.com. During our Farm Basics time today, we wanted to talk a little bit about soil sampling. So if you're a non-farmer, you're probably wondering, well, how exactly do farmers do that? And what's going on out in fields? How do they know where to sample? Those kinds of things. Let's talk about that a What I bit. think really surprises people is farmers are getting really high tech. Uh, when you think about soil sampling, you say, oh, okay, I just go out there, stick a probe in the ground somewhere, and, uh, and get the results of that, see what nutrients I've got. And that's not the case. For many farmers, they are grid sampling now. We're using GPS coordinates. They divide that field up into one acre or two acre plots that they're going to sample in specific spots in those areas of the grid. The thing is, these farmers aren't just going out and pulling one core, though. They go to an area, let's say this one acre, and they pull a few different cores, then blend those together in that one acre. So it's not just one little spot. It's a little bigger area, but still, to sample one acre or two acre grids, that's a lot smaller than a whole 80 acre field. Well, you could do the same thing. Like, let's say you're just a, a homeowner with a lawn, and your lawn is 20 feet by 20 feet. You could divide that lawn up and say, you know what, I'm going to take a 10 by 10 corner here, a 10 by 10 corner there, and have four 10 by 10 areas, have four different spots where you're going to send in samples well, from. Okay, if, if your lawn is that small <laughs> though, you don't need to do anything. You don't need to divide it up into grids unless you're dealing with different soil types or different topography. In other words, if you've got a low, ground, low area and a high area, you want to sample those separate. If you have one type of soil here and a completely different type of soil down here or over here, then sample those separate, like Darren's talking about having little grids. But really, if it's all flat and it's all the same soil, I don't think it's necessary in a 20 by 20 lot. Well, no, but <laughs> you, you did bring up something called zone sampling that many farmers are going to. And they say, you know what, those little grids, may not exactly make a lot of sense for me. Plus it costs a lot of money when you divide up, you know, like even your 20 by 20 lawn, if you're gonna do four samples, but that's kind of spendy. But maybe you say, you know what, in my lawn, I've got a hill and then I've got a low spot. Maybe I'll sample that low spot and I'll sample the hill and I'll send in two samples and see if there's a big difference and manage it that way. Because after all, if you find out, oh, the hillside needs a lot more potassium, but the lower ground doesn't need any potassium, you can do that without any high technology on your lawn. You could walk around and spread some up on the hill if you knew you needed it there, but not in the low. It's the same thing for farmers. They'll look at their fields and maybe they've got a hill and a low spot and they'll sample those two different. And they may even sample the right. side hill connecting the two and see where they need to go because if they find out, oh, you know what, on the side hill, I need some micronutrients, but the high ground and the low ground, I don't need any. Well, that's pretty easy. Anybody with any level of technology can just spread the side hill. That's pretty pretty simple. Yep, so that is what we do on our farm. We do what's called zone sampling. So we've well, done surprise, some- surprise, surprise. We wanna keep it simple. Yeah, we have done some grid sampling before and that's great. And if you're a farmer and you say, boy, this zone sampling seems kinda of complicated. Here, I'll tell you how to do it simply. You just go out and have your field grid sampled one year. Then you put all the grids together that basically test the same. You now have created zones out in your field. So in an 80 acre field, if you had one acre grids, you have 80 different soil samples you're sending in. But if you combine those, and maybe in the end you can have eight different zones. So sure, some of them may only be an acre or two, some of those zones. Some of them may be 12 or 15 acres. All we care about is that we wanna find where soil variation really is. In other words, like in our low grounds, we've got some high pH. In our high grounds, we have some really low pH. We wanna make sure we're sampling those separate. I don't really care if all that low ground is, you know, it goes from 8.4 to 8.5 pH that little difference doesn't matter to me. But when I have an 8.5 pH to a 5.1 pH, I sure don't want to mix those samples together. Then I have no idea what's really going on out in the field. Well, the biggest thing for farmers is they want to do things right because fertilizer is the biggest crop input expense for most farmers. And you think about it, you say, well, they're going to spread fertilizer on all the ground, aren't they? Not necessarily. If the soil tests show up that, hey, we've got real high fertility here, we can get by without applying any more, that's what a farmer's gonna do because it makes a lot of economic sense. The other side of that is environmental sense. When you say, wow, I've already got plenty of nutrients here to raise my crop, I don't need any more. 
well, why put any more on? It makes no sense for the environment, and it definitely makes no sense for the farmer's bottom line either. Well, once again, there are many different ways that you can sample soil. Grid sampling or zone sampling works well for most farmers out there. Well, one thing you might see if you're out soil sampling anywhere is our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to take care of this tough weed later in the show.